All right, it's for me to look at later on once I've forgotten. Just this week, a lot of stuff has happened. One of them, very unexpected. The girl that I was with in college for a long time, probably the person I've just uh, connected with the most romantically in my entire life, um, my first love, I would say. Um, we haven't seen each other in a number of years. And it didn't end great at all. It ended actually terribly. Um, and I will take the blame for most of that because I could not imagine a reality where I wasn't with this person and I made a big mess. Just so much resistance when it became clear things were starting to, you know, um, and I had a lot of shame and regret about that and stuff. Luckily, I cleared a lot of that out. And now I genuinely have positive regard towards that person. And we did a lot of fucked up stuff to each other. I'm not gonna lie. It was not unconditional love. It was, started off as lust to be quite frank. And I don't know if it ever really made it out of there, but at least for me there was just this undeniable like feeling of like I feel the world feels okay when I'm around you and once we knew that to be the case for each other we really used that against each other to really ruffle each other's feathers get what we wanted not healthy not good pretty toxic whatever it's the past but that's a little background and just this week this uh this girl texted me said she's in town because she'd moved away and i knew this day would come it, ne it didn't come but i knew we would eventually reconnect whether by happenstance or if we planned it out because it wasn't actually th like there's no like I don't hate her for anything and I don't think she hates me for anything even though we did some silly stuff I think there is weirdly more love between us than anything else and that always wins out so years later she texts me sends me a video of us when we were in college and then so she's in town and she was in town for work and um, we weren't able to find a time to connect. But we started talking a little bit over text. And it seems like her life is pretty interesting. And my life is becoming more interesting. And even though I've really let that go, you know, that desire to be with her because she was such a massive source of validation for me and I've really been working to like no I am worthy of love because I say so <laughs> there is no thing I can do or person I can be with or goal I can achieve external to myself that will ever validate me so that's silly I'm deserving of love and I am great and awesome and whole and good just because I'm me and I love me but then when I saw her I, I didn't see her what am I saying when I saw her text me just poof, all of a sudden I don't know trauma response is dramatic but like some part of my brain flipped back into the mode of like how do we have to play our cards to get what we want which is her validation and her validation is a result of us being with her blah 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 and it was like whoa holy smokes and I'm not gonna lie 
I let that roller coaster take me for a ride for a little bit. And it was kind of funny, you know, slipping back into that mindset. But luckily, you know, years removed from that and lots of practices and studies and whatever later, I definitely have more tools in my toolbox to navigate thoughts like that. <coughs> so it didn't stick around forever. But it's still kind of sneaking up a little bit. And I'm just... It's tough because there's that part of me that's just like, this is it. This is what we need. We will be good if we are back with her. But I know that's not true. So it might be cool to be back with her. Who knows? But like, why would I put my happiness beyond a boundary that I cannot control whether I cross or not? That is silly. No, my life will be good regardless of whether I ever talk to this person ever again. I know that to be true. I feel it to be true. But I still have that pathway, that neural pathway built over years of just, hmm, I'm feeling slightly not good about myself. But that's okay because this person likes me, so it's all good. But when you set things up like that, once you're not with that person gets kind of hard so don't do that don't do that but what I'm saying is I realized when I went for a walk two days ago when I was feeling myself slipping like oh my god like am I not over her like this is crazy instead of being super one way or another of like my life is good if I'm with her that's a failure. That, that that didn't work. I lived that for many years. And when things ended, and we weren't talking, I swung the pendulum hard the other way. And I was like, fuck that person. Like, we don't need that. That's not good for us. You know, they sucked. You know, blah, blah, blah. And that wasn't good either. And true maturity and growth, I think, would be to be somewhere in the middle. Um and not have that even be a thing that like your happiness or well-being or validation is gonna be determined by and if I really sit and try and like feel into it with rationale and logic and also spiritual whatever the thing that made sense to me on the walk is like she's not the focus the, the, what I want is to be with an amazing woman who is smart, beautiful, adventurous, athletic, spiritual, wise, loving, kind, all this stuff. Honestly, I have pretty high standards. And there is that part of me that's like, damn, like I've made a lot of progress in life. Seems like she's made a lot of progress in life. Maybe we could be that. And instead of stomping that part of me down, like, feel, shut the fuck up. Like, no, like, or giving it this massive pedestal. Like, you're so right. Oh my God, we need to all of a sudden structure everything around getting back. No. The issue is making that person the, the object of your happiness. Because then you can be swayed about whether you're in your desired reality or not. But regardless of whether this girl and me ever get something going or don't, it doesn't matter. Because if I keep the awareness and the intention of I'm in the desired reality of being with the woman of my dreams, whether I end up with her or not, is confirming of that because I put myself in that end zone first so if she one day tells me to fuck off then great she wasn't the one I don't have to go through that spiral of like oh because I'm not working from a result to try and get the intention I can work through the intention and trust that the result will come
and it will guide me there. And I'm sure I could probably do this in many areas of my life, like a job, you know, but if you can hold that conviction of I am currently in the reality where I am the best version of myself, um, only the best things are coming my way, even if they seem shitty in the short term, they are meant to teach me and grow me and they will make sense one day if you can stay there in that space and it's hard because life I know for sure life will fucking cut you down at the knees and it sucks it's painful but if you can hold that conviction of no matter what independent event happens and how I feel about those independent events doesn't matter because this is the way I'm going and anything that happens will only be confirmation that I am on that path. And that is why, and that is where my peace came from. When my brain was kind of bouncing around of like, oh my God, are we slipping back into old ways? Do we like this person? Do we not like this person? Oh my God. Like, uh. the peace came in when I put myself in that end zone of knowing I'm in the reality where I'm with the person that I'm meant to be with. Even though I'm not with them right now, that's the path I'm on. And whether it ends up being this person that I already know and have feelings for and have a connection to, or someone brand new, doesn't matter. I don't know who it is, but I'm already on this path and I'm going to stay on it. And nothing's going to shake me. Peace.